Sanjay Uvacha, Sanjay, Sanjay is narrating the whole story and Sanjay told Dhritarachya, this is what the condition right now is. Arjun is very, very sad and Krishna is not going to speak. And Krishna says, starts saying that, Shlok number 11, he says, Arjun, you are talking like a very learned man, I understand. But whatever you are mourning for is not even worthy of grief. What are you mourning for? He says, the wise people do not lament, neither for the living nor for the dead. He goes on saying one thing, O Arjun, never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. O Arjun, we are going to live. I have lived, you are going to live. Everybody is going to live. So first of all, Arjuna, Krishna and Arjuna, they established the duality that Bhagwan is always there. And the Ansha of Bhagwan means the part of Bhagwan that is us, living entities. Bhagwan, God is always there and we are his part and parcel. We will always be there too. So this duality, Bhagwan is as established. And before that, Arjuna also established the duality. Arjuna says, you are guru, I am disciple. These two shlokas are very important here. Because there is a Brahmavadi explanation of this whole thing. Mayavadi as they, everywhere you will see they use the word Mayavadi, Mayavadi, Mahapan. It is also called as Brahmavadi. In Brahmavadi explanation, Mayavadi, Brahmavadi is, as far as the theory goes, it's the same. The names have been changed. When they say Mayavadi, it means the knowledge is there, but it has been covered by Maya. That is where the true knowledge that Bhagwan also exists and the living entity also exists. One is Paramatma, the other is Atma. They both will always exist. So this whole knowledge gets covered up by Maya, whereby they say Bhagwan is also Brahma. Brahma means formless. And Jivatma, living entity is also Brahma. You are also formless. When you become liberated, Brahma is a super conscious energy. That is why it is formless. You are also as Atma are super conscious, conscious energy. So you will mix up in that bigger super conscious energy and you will become one with him and, and you are liberated. So, so, and then those people who, who believe in this theory, then they take it further more. They'll say, you are also gods. There is no such thing called God, separate concept. concept. Every human being is God. You are God. But here, this is not being established. God is God. Krishna is Krishna. Arjuna is Arjuna. Arjuna is not saying, the Brahma inside me wants the guidance from the Brahma inside you. Brahma means that formless, whoever, super conscious energy. Arjuna is not saying that. Oh, the Brahma inside me is confused. That God inside me is confused. Please, the God inside you, oh, Arjuna, oh Krishna, let the God inside you give me the guidance. It is not happening like that, right? Arjun is a human being, is a living entity, just like us. And Bhagwan is acting like a human being, but he is not a human being. Bhagwan is Bhagwan. He is not a human being. He has become a human being just for us. Because that's the way he will reply. How will we understand? If he is some extra uh, human, you know, if he does not exist, if he is just a formless, we won't feel that nearness with him. That is why Bhagwan has become like us. People say Bhagwan is formless. 
he can create so many forms he can't create a form for himself formless has taken so many forms and he can't create a form for himself he wants he prefers to be formless he can be both he can be formless he can be form be formed too as we have taken a form our atma has a different body and our outer body is different we have taken a form so here the duality that bhagwan is bhagwan and arjun is a living entity and he is he has become the disciple and he is asking bhagwan who is now right now acting as guru and he is putting his sincere queries since a question in front of him and he is asking bhagwan to guide and bhagwan now says what are you lamenting for let me remind you you always existed i always existed right now we both are in this human form but i will always exist you will also always exist then he goes on saying the sadness the grief that you are expressing is just like the seasons o son of kunti the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer they arise from sense perception o skyan of bharata and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed so many qualities bhagwan goes on describing for a sadhak here one quality he has described for a devotee or for a practitioner for a person who is walking in the spiritual path one should know how to tolerate things and not get disturbed if your mind is disturbed in lot of things it will be very difficult for you to take this knowledge so under all circumstances one must hear these words and tell yourself calm down calm down nothing is going to happen everything is going to be good all is well no matter how much things are going bad around you no matter you are going to lose some of your loved ones but the teachings of gita prepare one for such situations nobody is going to die everybody is going to live as the soul form they'll keep coming so there is nothing for which you should lament situations in life may be bad today but good times will also come even in the bad times there are so many other good things to look forward so one must not get perturbed one must not get disturbed under all circumstances one has to remain equipoised oh best of arjun the person who is not disturbed by happiness and dis- and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation so here he goes on saying number 1 do not get disturbed first of all no you are always going to live there as a soul then do not get disturbed always be like the dhira and then he says the qualities for liberation shloka number 15 लिबरेशन Nasato, this is sixteen. Shloka number sixteen. 
नासतो विद्यते भावो ना भावो विद्यते सतह उभयोरपी दृष्ट अंत अंतस्व अन्योस्तत्व दर्शि भी दोज हु आर द सीयर्स ऑफ ट्रुथ हैव कंक्लूडेड दैट ऑफ द नॉन एक्सिस्टेंट मटेरियल बॉडी देर इज नो एंड्यूरेंस and of the eternal the soul there is no change this they have concluded by studying the nature of both so he says o oh arjun since you are talking like a wise man i am going to quote what the wise men say and what are the wise men saying he says the seers of the truth those who have seen the truth they always say one thing this material body it will go away one day there is no endurance there is no endurance of the changing body this is going to change 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 and go away the cells of the body every second are changing we we, we never realize right we have grown up so much in age we just feel we are that young person always we never realize how many years we have lived on this planet and just flies by only when you look at their school pictures and all you know <laughs> i was once upon a time we were young but if we still feel young so here it says there is no endurance for the changing body that the body is changing every moment by the actions and the reactions of the different cells and this is also admitted by the moral uh, by the modern medical science the body is undergoing birth old age something is happening in the body every second right now when we are talking some cells are dying in the body one wrinkle is coming out somewhere we don't know over the period of time we realize oh <laughs> everything is sagging but every second this change is is happening inside the body so what is there to think of but the soul will is just remaining as it is the soul is not changing the soul is just remaining as it is so that is the difference between the matter and spirit but by nature the body is ever changing the soul is eternal this conclusion is established by all the seers of truth and both the impersonalist and the personalist so impersonalist means those who say oh everything is no, there is no form so there are religions in the world which say there is no form of god don't bring don't say god incarnated like a human being they don't want to hear that if you go to their places of worship you will not see any form there either they'll be worshiping a book whatever is their holy book or they'll be worshiping i don't know something covered with some something but there is no form they worship they say there is no form for me i always feel but you are worshiping the book <laughs> the book has a form they'll put just a cross the cross is a form you go to the mosque they have covered with some green cover you know they have some cloth over there something is there something has a form how are you saying god is formless something you are trying to see him anyways so even the impersonalist who say there is god is formless but they also believe in one thing this body is going to decay and the soul is always going to remain and the personalist they will say yes it will take another body and will come back again that's only difference so the words existent and non existent refer only to spirit and matter that is a version of all seers of truth so the impersonal is face say why why are you the way they will look at this body why are you crying this body is made up of five elements the elements are going to mix up in the element the earth element will mix up in earth the water in the water element the air in the air element what are, what is there that you are crying for and your soul consciousness is conscious soul is just consciousness consciousness is going to mix up in the bigger bigger super consciousness done what is there to cry 
the seer, the other one, the, the one who believe in personal form, they'll say, what is there to cry? This body was anyway old. This body, it has changed. Next body it is going to get. What is there to cry? Do not cry for anything. So this is the beginning of the instruction of the Lord, by the Lord, to all the living entities who are bewildered by the influence of ignorance. Removal of ignorance involves the re-establishment of the eternal relationship between the worshipper and the worshipable and the consequent understanding of the difference between the part and parcel living entities and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One can understand the nature of the Supreme by thorough study of oneself. The difference between oneself, oneself and the Supreme being understood as a relationship in, between part and the whole. In the Vedanta Sutras, as well as in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Supreme has been accepted as the origin of all emanations. Such emanations are experienced by superior and inferior natural sequences. The living entities belong to the superior nature as it will be revealed in the seventh chapter. Although there is no difference between the energy and the energetic, the energetic is accepted as the supreme and the energy or nature is accepted as the subordinate. The living entities therefore are always subordinate to the, to the supreme lord as in the case of master and the servant or the teacher and the taught. Such clear knowledge is impossible to understand under the spell of ignorance and to drive away such ignorance, Lord teaches the Bhagavad Gita for the enlightenment of all the living entities for all time. 